Hi, this is Alan Gleason for Crossfader. In this video, I'm going to look at NewGen's Focus Bundle, three plugins designed to help you manage, correct, enhance, and bring to life the stereo information in your productions. They work great individually or in combination. To start off with, I've inserted the three plugins on my drum bus. Signal first goes into Stereo Placer, which is a frequency specific panning plugin. Next, it goes into Stereoizer, a very powerful stereo widening plugin. And then finally, the signal goes into Monofilter, which allows you to control the width of your low and high end frequency ranges. Currently, Stereoizer is bypassed, and with the Monofilter, I'm going to set it so that it's not processing the signal. I'm going to just use it as an analyzer for our stereo information. So, the Stereo Placer is a frequency conscious panning plugin. So, if I start to boost a specific band here, if you're wearing headphones, you'll probably hear a kind of strange kind of twisting effect going on between your ears. I can solo this particular band so I can really focus in on where I want to pan, what frequency range. So let's go out of this and I'll just bypass that for the minute. So what I'll use it to is to alter the position of where the hi-hats are. So first I'll solo. Define the range that I want to address. Now, if you push up, it will go over to the left, and if you pull down, it will go over to the right. So you can do this manually, and you can adjust the cue or the width of the band. You can also adjust this in these dialog boxes down here, where you can actually dial in specific values if you want. So I'll take this out of solo. You can hear the position of the frequency ranges that are in that band, which is around 5.5 kilohertz, which is where our hi-hats are, I can alter the position of where they are in the stereo field. So currently that's all I'm going to use Stereo Placer for, because the stereo positioning of all the other sounds in my drum bus, I'm actually happy with. So next I'll move on to the Stereoizer. So this is quite different from other stereo enhancing plugins that you might have come across in that there's two sections to it. There's an IID or interaural intensity difference and there's ITD which stands for interaural timing differences. And this is modeled on how we actually hear. The IID algorithm simulates how we hear based on intensity or loudness. So when a sound is not directly in front of you, it will be louder arriving at one ear than the other ear. And this is what's simulated in this algorithm, which is your controls on the left hand side here. The ITD section, simulates the timing differences. So when a sound is arriving at different times from one ear to the other ear, it helps us determine the stereo position of a sound. And the ITD controls are on the right hand side here. So for each section, I can control the width and I can control the frequency range that's gonna be addressed when I widen. And same with the ITD, I can control the width here. And you've got controls to affect the resolution or sharpness and the acuity or the smoothness of the ITD. We can also fill, which affects the density, and we can also phase invert the effect as well. The way Nugent designs their plugins is that they're quite intuitive visually. The settings that you dial in with the Stereoizer are very dependent on the sort of material that you're passing through it. So I'll start playing it and I'll bypass the ITD section to begin with. So we're only listening to the IID or interaural intensity differences. So if I push it very wide and we've got our kind of global width section here, when it's in the center or when it's at 100%, it's not going to be doing anything. So I'll just push it a bit wider. So that's no effect. And as I start to push out, so I can set the frequency range from 20 hertz, the lowest, and it goes up to 22 kilohertz. So if I bypass, you can hear it making a slight change there. So I'll push the linear width a bit further so it's more exaggerated. So I don't want to widen any of my bass information, so I'll set the, the low band to be around yeah, 276 hertz there. So I'm pushing it very wide there, the width is set to 100%. So I'll just bypass. You can hear it as I bring it in. Information like the hi-hats and there's a shaker and kind of tambourine going on, they really start to spread out, but it's a very kind of natural, smooth sounding effect. You 
can hear is just the resolution there. The sound kind of sounds a bit weird or a bit phasey, but there's no ideal setting for this. It just depends on the material that you're actually sending through it. So I could say, okay, that's maybe a bit too wide and I don't want it to affect everything. So I might just close in the band. And now I'll bring in my ITD. This simulates the interaural timing differences. Again, I'll just go very wide with that to begin with. So you can go to extremes with this and Nugen algorithms are So you can go to extremes with this processing, but the monocompatibility is very strong. So with this one here, say I might just give it a sense of air in the top end. So I'm processing different frequency ranges. That's quite subtle there. I can bring it down so they overlap. Acuity affects the smoothness of the result. And I can turn off fill, which will add more density to the effect. The overall range I can adjust for the IID. I can bring it in so it's just focused in on the top there. Now, also on the stereoizer, you can get dynamic control over the panning, or sorry, the stereo placement. So when I turn this on, and I can adjust the speed of the modulation. And you can see in our analyzer here the movement that it's introducing. And I can affect the depth of it here. So I'll turn everything up here to make it quite extreme. So I might not necessarily do something like this across my whole drum bus, but you can, if it was an individual sound, or maybe a particular effects return, or a particular yeah, sample, you can get a lot of interesting movement within the sound. You can also tempo lock it. So when you turn on tempo, the speed here locks into increments or divisions of the actual tempo of your DAW or the arrangement. So now you're getting kind of rhythmic movement in the stereo positions of what we're got set up here, particular bands. Lastly, the signal is going into our mono filter. And as I said, when you have it fully open like this, um, you can use it as an analyzer. So I can actually see that some of what I'm doing here is pushing some of the information out of phase. It's below the zero line here. It means that in this area, that's gonna be out of phase. So like this has been caused if I just bypass the stereoizer. We can see that because I was using quite extreme settings there, when you're using the fill command, that doesn't make the, the result mono compatible. So I can turn that off and then bring it back in. Still might have some issues because I'm set to, my linear width is set to like 200%, so I'm really pushing it. So I'll, I'll bring this back in a bit. And because I'm going very wide with my ITD there, So you can see as I turn it off, it kind of the signal really kind of closes in. And as I bring it back in again, all that kind of stereo information and movement starts to come back into the sound. So I'll turn off my dynamic movement. So in my mono filter here, I can, if I was concerned about that information there, I could either go back to my stereoizer and adjust the settings there. But if you were working with a signal where it was just naturally, you had issues with it. What I can do is that you've got two crossover points here on your mono filter. Now, one of the main uses for this is bass management. So I can set my low frequency here. So if I set it to 101 hertz there, everything below this is gonna be in mono and that's reflected in our sort of phase scope at the bottom here. I can set my upper crossover point set that to say 200 hertz everything below 200 hertz will start to become mono and when it gets to 
whatever we've set here, 93 hertz, everything below that will be completely in mono. You can achieve a similar kind of result with an MS EQ plugin where you can filter everything in the sides below a certain point. But the difference with the mono filter is that it actually allows you to control the width. So depending on the sound, something like a kick drum, I would want it completely mono. The low end, well, other sounds, you might just want to narrow the, the width of the bass frequency range. And you can also do the same with the or higher frequency range. So this is, you don't usually get this on stereo widening plugins. So this is pretty useful. So what I could do, if I wanted to correct some of that there, is that I, I could start to bring it back in there. Maybe just the tiniest amount. So when I'm bypassing that in and out there, the be very hard, particularly below like 90 hertz to make, to really hear any difference in what it's doing with the bass because it's very hard to localize frequencies in that range but if you're like yeah going to be playing out in a club or if you're worried about situations where there's going to be mono compatibility and um, bringing your bass into mono is a really nice feature depending on what your music has been aimed at you've also got a high pass filter here let's bring that in there so filter that just clear my scope there bring that down a tiny bit so you can see it's bringing everything back into phase there We've got an auto phase function here that can actually take care of that but sometimes having a bit of manual control is also useful as well in this if I wanted to push the sides a bit more can do that just want to make sure I don't distort and I can also adjust the balance of our mid signal so these three plugins in combination here really allow me to animate and bring life to the stereo information on my drum bus so if I bypass all of them that was a before not a, not a bad arrangement but when you bring it in Other than positioning, repositioning my hi hats, I'm really bringing a lot of kind of like wit and just depth in, into the mix. So I've switched over to another track here. I've got a kind of a marimba sound going on. So first, it's going into the mono filter. So I'm just filtering out or making everything mono below, say, 84 hertz. If I was to bring this up here, you can see in our analyzer here the sort of information that it would be filtering out. There's a tiny bit of information there, so I just want to keep everything solid, base in the center. Don't need to affect any of the high end. And then it's going, after that, it's going into our stereo placer. So because there's more harmonic information in this that I might want to just compare it with my drums, I can start with one band. solo this by itself to begin with so we can really just focus in on that close in there so if I find a particular frequency or harmonic that I want to affect I can also turn on my harmonic here so it will affect uh, the harmonics of that particular frequency so if you focused in on a particular note it will allow you to emphasize all the content of that note and you can affect the the level of the upper harmonics so typically with a sound the so the fundamental frequency is always going to be the louder and then the upper harmonics will will decrease in volume so you can simulate that here or if you want some of those upper frequency components to be louder you can push that there so it can affect the position of that so it can be more to the right more to the left So let's do like uh, some. Let's pick out another frequency. Yeah, let's all of that. Now I probably should be doing this in the context of the mix, but I'm just uh, in more analytical mode here to show what the plugin can actually do. Take that out of solo. So bypass. 
So the sound already is, it does have stereo information in it here, but by picking out a couple of notes and panning those specific frequencies of those notes, I can really give a lot more depth. So it allows you to have, if you've got instruments in the center of your mix, like your leads, your vocals, and you want to give them their own separate space and any sort of complementary in instruments, you can really push them into a particular space so that there's no conflict in the center. in there you can see that it's left a lot more space in the center for the other information and then finally I've got my stereoizer again so that I can even if I wanted to I can move this more to the left or the right I can do that and again I'll just solo this here so I can focus in exactly because Currently there, it's doing the complete range. And bring that in there. Again, like the other plugins, the stereoizer and the mono filter, you can focus in on particular ranges so that you're being very specific about where you're being able to place your sounds in the stereo field. Interesting to get some dynamic movement in this out here. So I've got different shapes that you can choose from. I put it on the random one here. So it can be quite subtle, but when you've placed a number of these plugins in combination the way I've done on like my drums and some instruments, and maybe even then you can you could do something like obviously on your stereo bus if you're thinking about doing some mastering. So I just bring in some more elements here. Obviously on your master bus, you still might want to say use your mono filter might be some base information that's built up from effects and other types of processing so you're making sure that it's mono compatible below a particular frequency and maybe a subtle amount of adjustment in our high end again keeping everything mono compatible let's call up my scope here so that I can really start to push things out wider having a bit of an issue there it's quite a busy mix here lots of virtual instruments and plugins going on but I can safely dial in some settings there to really kind of enhance the stereo width of my mix without worrying about any mono compatibility issues so I hope you enjoyed that overview of the focus bundle from new gen if you like the video click on a like click on subscribe to keep updated on the latest videos and leave some comments below this has been Alan Gleason for Crossfader and I'll catch you next time